I'm upset, so I'm taking apart my computers. If I were a poet, I'd get drunk and yell at the people I love. As it is, I'm gutting my machines. This book speaks to me. This is Close to the Machine, Technophilia and Its Discontents by Ellen Ullman. It was published originally in 1997 and this copy is by Pushkin Press. It's a memoir of a software engineer uh, working in Silicon Valley in the 80s and 90s. It talks about literally programming, uh, but also her relationship uh, to her co-workers on projects that she's worked on, and also her family life and her sex life. Maybe that's a bit gratuitous at times, but I actually thought that it really fleshed out um, Ellen as a person and it made me understand her better. Before I start talking about the book, I have to say that I am a programmer, I'm a web developer, I code for a living, uh, so obviously I'm going to have a different reading experience of this than anybody that isn't computer technical like that. The first thing that hit me about this book is just how much I relate to it. I don't know many programmers in real life, uh, so I don't get to talk about it a lot, but really she just pinpoints everything. There's this whole section about your mind going into algorithm mode. She's working on this project for AIDS patients to monitor their medication and stuff, and she's talking about at some point you just have to sort of detach yourself from the human side of the project and just treat it like a massive logical puzzle and we get such satisfaction from solving those puzzles. Your mind just becomes like this flowchart of conditions and consequences and it's just, it's so hard to describe, but she did it really well. The best way I could describe it to non-technical people is like if you are learning a second language or know a second language and you get to a point where there's something in your second language that you can't describe with your first language and you know it instinctively, uh, but it's really hard to put into words. That's kind of like what programming is because you're just in this world and your mind is just thinking on a different plane to the way it usually thinks. And that's made me think about something that I think about quite a lot, uh, which is the natural laws of the universe. We know that there are laws in physics that we discovered through thinking about and like mathematics, like, you know, pi and stuff like that, where it's just baked into the way the world works and yet it's something that we had to sort of figure out and quantify. I think the same is true for programs. There's like this inherent logic, you know that in any program language, you're gonna have to have variables and functions and conditions. And there's just this amazing nature of it being something that obviously we had to derive, um, but is universally true. There's no other way that we could have gone about it. And the thing that's really weird about it is that computing is something we as people have completely invented. It's not something we would just come across if we were wandering around in the wilderness, you know, 20 billion years ago. It's like this human made natural state of the world and it, that just fascinates me. This is unrelated, but it's reminded me of a conversation I had yesterday with my flatmate. Um, she studies design at university and I studied a type of design at university. And there's this sort of natural law of design projects that as far as I know, you only really get in art school because in the real world of having design clients, you have ideas and you have to have an outcome. But in art school, you can do anything. <laughs> and there's always gonna be this battle of like, oh, should I pursue that or should I try other things? And it's just these inherent laws of how to go about things. I just, I find this really interesting. Anyway, next topic. Uh, something that has made this book stand the test of time is how sort of prophetic it is, but it's not really prophetic in the way that it's it's telling the world what it's gonna be like. It's prophetic in the way that it's it's kind of constant. The way that she describes the technology world in this book is sort of the same world that we're living now. So remember this was published in 1997. Having a web page has become the way we must prove our existence. We have a presence on the web and therefore we are real. I can't remember a lot about what it was like in 1997. <laughs> I don't remember using the internet until at least the year 2000. But that statement is just so true of today. And I find it strangely comforting because um, Ellen expresses these fears about like the future of the technology industry um, and stuff. And they're the, the exact same fears that I have now. And yet when this book came out, we weren't overwhelmed by those prophecies yet. And we're still not. And because we're in the exact same state as is described in this book, so we're perpetually in the stage and we're never actually gonna reach this point of being completely overwhelmed by technology. There's a part in this book where she's talking about becoming obsolete and not wanting to learn the new hip thing because it's so, crazy and confusing and there are people that are already at the front of the line with that and she knows that she's gonna have to give in and learn it eventually and then become like arrogant with her knowledge in it. 
and that it's almost self-destructive to not embrace that now uh, and just let yourself become more and more obsolete. And that is the most humbling thing I have read in so long because I have those problems now. All the things I know that I hold dear as being like valuable knowledge is slowly becoming less valuable. There are things that I don't know that I really should know that I'm just not learning out of just pure stubbornness. And I keep thinking that like, it's just this point in time where things have just got so confusing and there are so many people in the field of technology that somebody is gonna be there to take my job even if I do learn this thing and it's just scary. But the exact same thing happened in the mid 80s, just instead of like learning Angular instead of jQuery, they're like learning Java instead of C++. And she's talking about how you have to just accept that any knowledge you have is going to be temporary because there is gonna be something bigger and better and more complicated to overtake it. And you have to just accept that and learn the new stuff, otherwise you will just be left behind. So this has been Close the Machine. If you are a programmer of any sort and you read this, you'll just be going like, yes, she understands me uh, the whole time and it will be really satisfying. If you're not a programmer, some of the technical language might be a little bit of a learning curve, but this book is about sort of the relationship between humans and technology and humans and other humans. And it's, I think it's really, interesting either way and also if you don't know anything about programming it would just give you an insight into what it's like to be a programmer which i think would be interesting anyway uh, so i thoroughly recommend close the machine by ellen ullman i'm going to give this six out of seven stars the actual plot of the book wasn't that interesting the stuff that happened but the ideas behind it and it, what it made me think was just great oh it was really great anyway this is this has been close the machine um i hope you've liked this video I will see you soon. Bye.